Some places are so full of color that they look like they've been plucked straight out of a fairy tale. There are some places in the world that will make you feel like you've stepped into a storybook. So for today's video, I'm going to explore 15 of the most colorful places on the planet. Number 15. Kankamogas Highway Come fall, the east coast of the United States foliage changes from the typical green to some spectacular shades of red, brown, and yellow. From September to October, people throw on a light coat and go for foliage walks. New Hampshire's National Scenic Byway, the Kankamogas Highway, is New England's most superb scenic drive, especially during the fall foliage season. During peak season, more than 4,000 vehicles traverse at least a portion of this famous route. Allow plenty of time for your outing, not only because traffic can build up, but because there are so many attractions to see and Instagram-worthy photo op stops along the kank, particularly if you're up for a bit of hiking. The highway goes on for 35 miles and has become so popular over the years that regulars just call it the kank. Some notable stops along the way include the Lincoln Wood Suspension Bridge, Otter Rocks, and the Sabaday Falls. But the icing on the kank cake is the hairpin turn, which, at least from the air, is one of the most photographed stops along the route. Number 14. Minakshi Amman Temple The Minakshi Amman Temple is the heart of the ancient city of Madurai in Tamil Nadu, India. It's a religious and mythological symbol dating back 2,500 years. The temple's 14 towers are each covered in thousands of colorful stone figures depicting animals, gods, and demons, all in fantastic colors. The temple is enough to create a sensory overload. Now, the sacred site draws upwards of one million visitors each year for the Chithrai festival to celebrate the divine marriage of Minkashi to Sundaraswara, which in Hinduism is its biggest event on Earth. The temple was built by the Tamil Hindus native to southeastern India and first appeared in recorded history in the 600s. In the 1300s, the sacred structure was ransacked and destroyed by the Muslim general Malik Kafur in a successful attempt to spread Islam to Madurai. It wasn't until 250 years later, in 1559, that the structure was rebuilt by the first Nayak king of Madurai. And thank heavens for that. The Minkashi Amman Temple remains standing today, the tallest tower reaching 170 feet high. This historic temple was even nominated for the new Seven Wonders of the World. There are intricately carved figures all over, each with their own history and mythical, religious, and cultural experience. The Amman Temple isn't just one of the most colorful places on Earth, it's also one of the most beautiful. Number 13. Zhongye Dancha Found along the path of the Silk Road in northwestern China's Gansu province, this insane array of colorful geology awaits those who are willing to find it. Vivid reds, oranges, and yellow stripe along the mountains in technicolor harmony, with rocks allegedly shaped like animals and mythical creatures. This geological park also offers several hiking areas and scenic overlooks to fully enjoy the color. That being said, visitors don't need to struggle to see the rainbow rocks. Where do they come from? Well, the answer is not as magical as you might think. The colors come from the layers of sandstone dating back millions of years, long before any of us were even a twinkle on our parents' eyes. With erosion, wind, and weather, the colorful layers were formed, giving us this Martian landscape that we see here today. But what matters isn't why there are rainbow mountains, but that somewhere out in the wild, a place like this actually exists. There are a small handful of other places, like Zhangye Dansha in the world, but this one manages to stand out above the rest. Number 12. Hall of Mosses All right, this next entry on our list isn't a location from any fantasy novel. It's not home to characters like Treebeard or Yoda. The Hall of Mosses is the name of a distinct hiking trail in Washington's Olympic National Park, located in the whole rainforest. Plucked right from a storybook, the trail's filled with old big leaf maples and Sitka spruces, draped in the titular green and brown mosses. This rainforest is named for the ever-flowing Ho River that carves its way from Mount Olympus towards the Pacific coast. In the winter, the forest receives most of its yearly average of 140 inches of precipitation. Yeah, it's a lot of water, but without such precipitation, the Hall of Mosses would never exist. All of that water results in a lush green canopy above, and a blanket of mosses and ferns blanket below. Along the main trail, there's an otherworldly 200-foot side path that leads to an enchanting grove of giant maple trees cloaked in hanging moss. This fast-growing moss doesn't damage the trees. Instead, it's the nutrient-rich soil that does the damage. The incredibly wet soil causes the trees to grow short roots, and therefore they have a lack of stability. The trail is incredibly short, less than a mile long, and at an elevation gain of only 100 feet. But the gorgeous stroll is easy enough for all to enjoy. 
Like all of Washington's national parks, the Olympic National Park keeps the trail well maintained, meaning that despite the definite puddles and mud, the gravel trail is sure to make the jaunt enjoyable. More importantly, the gravel trail keeps walkers from damaging the spooky thick growth. Number 11. Kochia Hill Japan is known for its gorgeous sakura trees during the spring. During Hanami season, the entire country is covered in the pink snow, and people come from far and wide to get a glimpse of the heavenly glory. But Japan offers some other more surprising blooms that don't always get the attention they deserve. The scrubby little kochia plants, otherwise known as summer cypress, are not much to look at for most of the year. But at the end of the wet season, they take on an extraordinarily brilliant red color, giving them the name Burning Bush. In Hitachi Naka City at the Hitachi Seaside Park, a vast stretch of rolling hills is jam-packed with this vivid crimson bush that sway with the breeze with whimsical storybook-like roads winding and weaving throughout. Outside of the park, Kochi is more often gathered for the mundane purposes of making brooms, but the park takes advantage of how spectacular it can be when planted in such abundance. The park's gentle slopes are full of flowering plants year-round, often in enormous monochromatic displays, and is also famous for its flowers with transparent blue petals. The hills roll on for over 800 acres, and 32,000 of the bright Kochia balls color the land. Get here at the right time, and various festivals held on the hill, and you'll feel like Dorothy and company as they run through the poppy fields on their way to the great and powerful Oz. Don't sleep on Kochia Hill. Number 10. Kawachi Fuji Gardens It's practically impossible to walk through the pastel-colored passageway of wisteria flowers at the Kawachi Fuji Gardens in Kitakyushu without imaging an elegant fairy princess and her one-horned white steed prancing alongside you. A member of the pea family, wisteria is an ornamental vine, wildly popular in both eastern and western gardens for its graceful hanging flowers and its ornate winding branches. It's easily trained, the woody vines tend to reach maturity within a few years, at which point they bloom in cascades of long, lavender flowers of varying pastel shades. There are about 150 flowering wisteria plants of roughly 20 species that create this famous colorful flower tunnel. Make sure to visit in late April or early May during the Fujimatsuri, or Wisteria Festival, when the magic tunnel is in full bloom. Because so many visitors come to the gardens during the blooming season, you need to book your time slot well in advance. Arrive at any other time of year and its appearance will be a disheartening mass of lifeless, twisted branches. The fact that the Kawachi Fuji Gardens bloom so spectacularly, yet for such a short time, only adds to the beauty of it all. If you want to see these dropping wisteria, then you're going to have to be patient. And when you do finally see them, you need to soak it in as best you can, because they don't last long. In this world of two-day shipping and instant gratification, places like Kawachi Fuji Gardens remind us to slow down, stop, and smell the roses. Number 9. Valley of Fire Dedicated in 1935, Valley of Fire is Nevada's oldest and largest state park. But fear not, because there are no fires here. Instead, the epic name comes from the red sandstone formations that make up this equally epic landscape. These features, which are the centerpiece of the park's attractions, often appear to be on fire when reflecting the sun. Other rock formations include limestone, shales, and conglomerates, all jutting from the ancient rock and up towards the fiery Nevada sun. But the Valley of Fire is old, really old. Prehistoric users of this valley included the basket maker people and later the Anasazi Pueblo farmers from the nearby fertile Moapa Valley, dating back anywhere from 300 BCE to 1150 CE. Their visits to the valley likely involved hunting, gathering food, and religious ceremonies, although scarcity of water would have limited the length of their stay. Stunning examples of rock art left by the ancient peoples can be found at several sites within the park in rock formations that are covered in petroglyphs. The valley itself is composed largely of a vibrantly red, iron oxide-bearing form of sandstone, contains numerous natural arches, and has been a scenic setting for several films and television shows. Resident birds include the raven, house finch, sage sparrow, and roadrunner. But many migrant birds pass through the park as well. And while the Valley of Fire may seem barren and devoid of life to visitors, it is full of wildlife. Because it's so hot during the day, most of the desert animals are nocturnal and not frequently seen by the passing motorist. Many species of lizards and snakes are common in the park, as well as the coyote, kit fox, desert tortoise, spotted skunk, black-tailed jackrabbit, and antelope ground squirrel. They all call this colorful valley home. Number 8. Las Salinas de Torre Vieja 
There are some lakes out in the world with odd colors. They might be bright red, neon green, or even bubblegum pink, like Australia's toxic Lake Hillier. Other than their funky colors, they all have one thing in common. They're incredibly toxic. Every fiber of your body may tell you to go for a dip, but if you do, these bodies of water may take a layer of skin as an admission fee. Luckily, this colorful lake is a little nicer. Two colorful salt lakes flank the northwestern edge of a small seaside town on Spain's Costa Blanca. Together, they form a natural reserve called Las Salinas de Torrevieja. One lake in particular, though, stands out. This lake's eye-catching bubblegum pink overshadows its standard green-tinted neighbor. When looking at Torrevieja from above, it looks as though a colossal strawberry milkshake melted and the gooey mess just pooled outside the city. Don't grab a straw just yet, it's actually the work of bacteria and algae. Halobacterium, or salt bacterium for the layman, thrives in these hot, salty places, as do microalgae called Dunadiela salina. These are the two magic and sometimes gross ingredients that give this place its bizarre coloring. Despite that funky color, the water is perfectly fine, though it can get a bit stinky. Torvieja relies on these salt lakes. People have been collecting the mineral from the waters for centuries. In the early 19th century, they officially became a hub for Spain's salt industry. In addition to boosting the city's economy, the lake also acts like a natural spa. Supposedly, the sludge of mud and salt at the bottom has healing properties that can relieve common skin and respiratory ailments. The water's high salt concentration makes it a fun place to relax and enjoy floating around with ease. Pink flamingos, much like the local people, also frequent the lake. Feasting upon the algae-filled shrimp that live in there that gives their feathers a rosy tint that almost matches the water, making for one of the funkiest circles of life in the world. Number 7. Wooden Shoe Tulip Farm Oregon is one of the most spectacular states in the United States and offers so many different types of scenery, from desert regions to lush green and brown forests and painted hills to blue beaches. It's this type of diversity that keeps people coming back, but there's one place in particular that really stands out. Visitors often flock to Oregon's Willamette Valley to sip Pinot Noir and wine country or tour the sites of Rose City. But come early spring each year, it's the beautiful blooming tulips that steal the show. One of the best places to enjoy this spectacle is the Wooden Shoe Tulip Farm in Woodburn, about 45 minutes outside Portland. It's one of the largest tulip farms in the U.S. Northwest, with 40 acres of flowers that erupt in a rainbow of color each year. Strolling through the neatly cultivated fields, visitors are welcomed by row after row of bright pink, red, white, yellow, purple, orange, and multicolored petals. The farm has around 80 variety of tulips that are organized into sections of color, a scene made even more picture-perfect by the idyllic backdrop of Mount Hood in the distance. The family farm hosts an annual spring festival as well to show off its colorful cream of the crop each year, opening up the flowering fields to the public for about a month between late March and early May. Visitors are invited to wander through the tulip fields on their own, or to tour the landscape by tractor, or even a hot air balloon. It's one bird's eye view you won't want to miss. This working farm also sells tulip bulbs, cut flowers, and potted plants to take home. The tulip farm is worth the trip even if you have allergies. Number 6. Dalol In northern Ethiopia, hours from any form of civilization is a vast expanse of brutal landscape unlike anywhere else in the world. Dalol in the Danakil Depression is a boiling, salt-formed world completely hostile to humans. The Danakil Depression, also known as the Afar Depression, holds the distinction of being one of the lowest and hottest parts of the world. On top of average temperatures of 94 degrees Fahrenheit, Dalol itself is surrounded by boiling hot springs, bringing hot minerals and toxic gas bubbles to the surface. Despite making Dalol uninhabited, these geological forces have actually made the area somewhat picturesque, coloring the lowlands with rusty orange, yellow, and green salt formations. Dalol is extremely unwelcoming to habitation. However, a number of people have still ventured into the region for work due to the high deposits of table salt in the area. Expeditions funded by Europe prior to World War I were shut down and dismantled throughout the first half of the 20th century. Later attempts by American, Indian, and Italian companies have resulted in thousands of mines throughout the region, but no permanent settlement. It's just too hot here. Although it is now uninhabited, small structures made of salt bricks were created by the Afar people when they were employed by mining companies throughout the 20th century. However, the majority of these have been abandoned and few traces of these settlements still exist. 
Near the Dalal area, in the same region as Erta Ale, the gateway to hell, a smoking volcanic terrain is complete with its own lava lakes. It's an equally harsh and unforgiving environment, and nearly impossible to reach without great difficulty. The thing about the Afar depression is that it's really best viewed from afar. Number 5. Canola Flower Fields Luoping County is quiet for most of the year until the canola flowers bloom, and then the area in Yunnan, China is reborn into a vibrant natural spectacle of yellow flowers as far as the eye can see. The fields of bright yellow canola flowers are used in the production of cooking oil. They're also popular with bees as tourists and photographs, so beekeepers set up tents among the flowers during February to March bloom. Almost anywhere outside the limits of the small town of Ruoping is drenched in the sunny hues. The most surreal place to view them are the towering mountains like the Golden Rooster Hill, or Jinjiefeng, and 100,000 hills spiking up from the floral fields. In some areas, they also form otherworldly shapes in the terraced farms. At the beginning of the canola season, an annual festival is held in the flower's honor, while after the petals fall, Ruoping County returns to its slumber amongst the hills. Getting down and dirty in the canola fields is pretty spectacular in its own right, but seeing those aerial shots with bright yellow flowers as far as the eye can see is really something else. And what's equally amazing is the fact that cooking oil, something we all use, comes from something so special. Number 4. Rainbow Mountain The peaks of the Aswangate Mountain region of the Peruvian Andes are not all uncommonly colored. Some are terracotta, some lavender, while others are vibrant turquoise. Nothing too out of the ordinary for Peru. The mountains are colored by the sediment and atmosphere of the area, unique because of their altitude and isolation close to the ocean. But none are quite so marvelous as Vinicunca, also known as Rainbow Mountain, Winicunca, Montana de Colores, and Montana de Siete Colores. They go by many names, but they're all known for one thing. It looks like a giant took a paintbrush and just went to town millions of years ago. But for all its eye-popping colors, Rainbow Mountain was notoriously hard to find. It's located deep in the mountain range, and even past the most adept travelers with highly experienced guides have reported difficulty locating it. In the past, it took about six days of hiking to reach its peak. Nowadays, anybody who's anybody can taste the rainbow, as there's plenty of bus tours departing from Cusco to the mountain. Due to the increase in popularity of the mountain, it's quickly become Peru's second most visited tourist site, just behind Machu Picchu. During the peak season, it can see up to 4,000 photo-snapping people per day. To be sure, those who love hiking will enjoy the journey as well, because the Aswangate trek is one of the most popular among visitors to Peru. There are hot springs, local villages and vendors, stunning views of the glacier, and adorable llamas, and soft as snow alpacas along the way. And nothing caps off almost a week of trekking like a visit to this breathtaking painted mountain. Number 3. Sagano Bamboo Forest Probably one of the most Instagrammed places on Earth, the Sagano Bamboo Forest is a once tranquil nature spot that is now a series of tourist-packed pathways. But if you get to this green garden at the right time, before the shutter bugs and the snapping selfie sticks, you'll hear the rustling, creaking, and swaying of one of Japan's governmentally recognized soundscapes. The Sagano Bamboo Forest is situated northwest of Kyoto in Japan, near the Tenryuji Temple and the Arashiyama District. Just 30 minutes or so from the sprawling Kyoto city center, the towering bamboo forest is an almost shocking contrast to the urban city surrounding it. Wooden paths weave through the dense thicket of tall bamboo stalks that reach dozens of feet into the sky, creating a serene canopy good enough for a haiku. As the wind passes through the tightly packed plants, the wood bends and creaks, the leaves rustle and the trunks knock together, creating a peaceful sound almost like nothing else. The meditative natural noise is so lovely, in fact, that Japan's Ministry of the Environment designated the location's oral pleasures as one of the country's 100 soundscapes of Japan, an initiative designed to encourage the local population to get out and appreciate the country's acoustic wonders. Don't expect to have that kind of thing in the West. Number 2. Gardens by the Bay Along Singapore's Marina Bay, a landscaping project known as Gardens by the Bay hopes to beautify the marina and help transform the dense city-state into a city in the garden. But with a futuristic design feature that borders on otherworldly, this garden is unlike any the world has seen before. Due to the sheer height and fantastical appearance, Gardens by the Bay's defining feature is almost certainly its collection of 18 super trees. 
with heights ranging from 80 to 160 feet and light displays that come alive at night, the super trees complement the nearby high-rises and add a distinctive flair to the Singapore skyline, creating a unique balance between man and nature. These trees are not trees in the traditional sense, but rather a series of man-made frames which house both greens and green technology. Roughly 200 species of orchids, ferns, and other tropical climbers scale the super trees' trunks, forming a lush, vibrant skin. In some regards, these super trees imitate the functions of regular trees. They absorb and redistribute heat, collect and filter rainwater, and provide shade with their expansive canopies. Eleven of the trees are outfitted with solar panels, which power the grove's lighting displays or ventilation systems used to capture exhaust from the park's greenhouses. Visitors can get up close and personal and look at these mechanical marvels from a 72-foot high walkway. The garden's home to more than the super trees, too. The high-tech garden's home to two enormous greenhouses, as well as several outdoor gardens and lakes. The flower dome supports thousands of varieties of cool, dry climate plants and flowers, while the nearby cloud forest fosters plants that prefer wet conditions found on the mountains and tropical highlands. Both of these greenhouses use sustainable technologies to minimize their environmental impact. Number 1. The Provence Lavender Fields of course, the most colorful place on Earth is going to be in the French countryside. The calming, delicate fragrance and dusky purple hue of lavender have enchanted people for centuries. So what could be better than surrounding yourself in fields of this stuff? If there's one place in particular that's become synonymous with lavender, it's Provence. Quaint villages and rolling vineyards and cuisine that incorporates lavenders into its oils, honeys, and delicious sorbets. Provence is perhaps the best place in the world to see fields upon fields of lavender. Truly, just purple as far as the eye can see. The plateau's lavender fields are perhaps the most famous and photographed in the region. The area is filled with fields of not only lavender, wheat and sunflowers as well, deep blue lakes and picturesque villages too. Most famous is the Valensole itself, situated above the plateau with the 11th century Saint Blasé Church as a focal point. Here and in the pretty village of saint croix du verdon is plenty to explore. One of the more notable highlights is the Abbey, where the monastery offers a heavenly backdrop to the Rose of Lavender. The trip is well worth it for the fine fragrance of its fields, thanks to its higher elevation compared to most other of Provence's lavender fields. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.